Revealing Oz. As a person who's committed to self-transformation, I continually choose the red pill when it comes to pulling the curtain aside of my own con unconsciousness to reveal the false power of the Oz that pushes the buttons and pulls the strings and levers of the monkey mind of reactions and negative feelings. Recently, I uncovered yet another subconscious entity in the form of demand for retribution. This is a strong one because there are so many justifications for this in the world. So many victimizers, so many victims, who in many cases seem completely innocent, unfairly attacked and debilitated, sometimes outrageously so, and in some cases, killed. For me, this has the effect of exacerbating or keying in this demand for retribution. It feels kind of like a Quentin Tarantino revenge movie with as much blood and gore as possible. What is that saying about me? Revenge is best served cold. <laughs> oh boy. The tragic problem with this fantasy, in my own case, is that the wrongness I feel that was perpetrated upon me requires that the injury it caused continues to victimize me. So the injury becomes this huge justification for achieving retribution against the oppressors and perpetrators in a future that never comes. This is a classic case of continual present time re-stimulation. Every time I feel the pain of that injury, it adds charge and power to the retribution program. Every time there's an injustice out in the world that I personally witness or hear about on the news, you know, victimization events are guaranteed to make the evening news, the need for revenge and accountability grows stronger and stronger, and the pains and discomforts of my life further solidify as a constant reminder of that deep need for revenge against my victimizers, or at the very least, some good old-fashioned street justice. The great thing about the Oz is that its power is granted by the curtain behind which it hides as it creates and broadcasts its fearful images. Pull aside that curtain and there's no more power. This becomes a metaphor for all injustice in the world. Reveal the operators and the owners behind their curtains of power and that power is effectively stripped from them then we all can see that they're just like us, living in their own worlds of fearful disempowerment and victimization. To mop up the residual charge from this revelation, every time I see or hear some perpetrator victimizing someone or something, when these retribution feelings surface, I say, interesting point of view, I have that point of view. This process neutralizes the negativity around the issue. Then, who does this belong to? And return it to sender, because all negative thoughts are not mine. They've been adopted by me as if they were my own, but they're not mine. As always, the non-duality of compassion is the key here. Compassion for both sides of a perpetrator-victim complex is necessary. Compassion removes the polarity of a drama and reduces it to an observation of choices. Each side made their choice and resulted in this drama. Both are deserving of love, even if they don't love each other or themselves. The quantum matrix program we live in is driven by choice. Choose a different outcome and the matrix program adjusts to accommodate that choice. Choose to retain a negativity or a grudge or a point of view, and the matrix program adjusts to accommodate that. The quantum sea of energy has no agenda on its own, but it can be programmed to appear that it does. All of us who have had the perception of the world being against us will attest to that. The truth is, we created that program of the world being against us, so we can just as easily create a world that's in favor of us. You have been listening to this question.
Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX. www.pureenergyrx.com.